Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? No, you just want to sit on the sideline and talk about other people. Okay. <laughs> Well, good morning, good Tuesday, Taco Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. And uh, we are in the silly season of the off season here because we've gotten a little taste of football, of course. And uh, the OTAs and things, we've got a little bit of workout on the field. You kind of get ready for football. And then you have the six weeks where you're literally holding your breath and praying that nothing happens with any of your players, that none of them go out to the bar and get tipsy and get into a bar fight, that they don't slip around the pool and break their elbow or slice their hand open, uh, cutting a bagel, so to speak, that you just want to hope and pray that everybody can get to training camp in one piece. Now, there is... We all think of people that are athletes, professional athletes, as not people or, you know, not just athletes, but, you know, politicians or uh, athletes or actors and things. We don't think of them as regular people and things that go on. You know, we don't know that they actually fart and it stinks or that they actually poop and stuff like that. But they do. And you have to understand how things go. You are that guy that has stinky gas you just play football and you have a lot of money so to speak just kind of putting things out there and when you are a celebrity or person that's important or football player people look and say i want some of that i want to be with that guy i want to get some fame off that guy i want to get some money off that guy and so things happen differently because you're famous. Some things that would happen to me, you know, nothing would change. If it's Dak Prescott, well, that's a different story. And at the moment, you look at the reason this whole thing is happening is because you're Dak Prescott with a whole bunch of money. See, I ain't got a whole bunch of money, so this wouldn't def definitely wouldn't happen to me. But we have... Uh, breaking news that Dak will be going to court today to get you guys kind of up to speed. Um, this off season, which has been unsavory, um, it's just been crazy since we lost to the Green Bay Packers. We heard about a sexual assault uh, countersuit from Dak Prescott because he alleges that he was being extorted. A unsavory situation happened in 2017 and here it is seven years later she's saying that she was sexually assaulted um, and I don't make mean to make light of any of this because if you've been sexually assaulted justice needs to be served but this one is kind of kind of crazy because you wait seven years and then you send a demand letter for a hundred million dollars or we're gonna go to the police that's where it all started going crazy. And if you really want to get into the meat of it, go uh, check out Dak Attack. Because Dak Attack, you know, was went to school with the attorney for the plaintiff um, and can give you more background and give you all the legal bark bits and pieces of this. Now, the thing that's kind of crazy on this whole situation was when this first came out, 105.3 The Fan had the attorney on their station and let them literally slander Dak Prescott left and right. When they dropped their suit in Dallas County, nobody talked about it. Um, they refiled it. So to kind of catch you up to speed, um, the Dallas detectives ended up investigating this, okay? They investigated the whole case, both sides of it and things, and they determined there was insignificant evidence over sexual assault charges against the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, Dak Prescott. The charges stem from an alleged incident in 2017 when a woman claimed that Dak Prescott assaulted her in the truck of his car in the parking lot at the bar where she worked. The bar, uh, strip club. 
don't know if she was a dancer or a bartender. We don't have any of that information, and I don't really want to go into that. Uh, Prescott's attorneys filed an extortion lawsuit in Collin County in March. Prescott denied the woman's allegations. Uh, one of the attorneys for the accuser said the extortion lawsuit was a smokescreen to distract the real topic that should be discussed, and that um, is that a rape was committed by Dak Prescott. Prescott's lawyer, Levi McLaren, who is uh, the Cowboys' attorney, uh, dismissed the woman's claims as false in the lawsuit. The lawsuit said sexual assault is a despicable crime and that no person should ever endure. Defendants' false claims in this regard undermine the courage and actual sexual assault survivors everywhere as well as the legitimacy and horrific trauma they endure. Amen on that. So let's go here and let's hear exactly what's transpiring today. Today, Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott set to be in court for a hearing involving what he's calling an extortion case. And it comes months after a woman filed a lawsuit against Prescott accusing him of sexual assault. Chris Sadeghi is live outside the courtroom in McKinney this morning with more on what we can expect today. And this has been a case where there has been quite a bit of back and forth, Chris. Quite a bit, to say the least. Yeah, Mark, and the hearing today at this courthouse could shed a little bit more light on where this case against Dak Prescott is going, as well as his countersuit against the woman who is accusing him. We're here at the Collin County Courthouse because you might remember back in April, attorneys for his accuser dropped their case in Dallas County to refile here in Collin, an effort to make things more convenient in the case after Dak filed his extortion countersuit here in Collin County. The woman claims that Prescott sexually assaulted her in February of 2017. In turn, Prescott's team of attorneys filed a civil countersuit for extortion, claiming the woman sent him a letter in February demanding $100 million in exchange for not going to police. Last month, sources told WFAA that Dallas police are not pursuing a criminal case against Prescott because they found no evidence to support the woman's accusations. So at this hearing today, we could find out the possibility of this case either going forward or maybe even a chance that it is dismissed. Mark, or Cleo, back to you. Okay, there you have it. All right, honey, after your... There you have it. So we'll see if this changes everything or see where this goes. Uh, we'll definitely be following... Um, following up to see where this goes and what happens. Uh, hopefully this whole thing will get settled and we can all move on from uh, where we are with this thing now because it's definitely not good. Um, another interesting little tad bit here is when something like this happens, because anybody can accuse you of anything. Um, with Michael Irvin, there was a investigation uh, about four months, three months ago into him and you heard about allegations against Michael Irving and that the police were going to do an investigation. I bet you actually didn't hear that they stopped the investigation, that there was nothing there. And that's the sad thing about when there's bad news, it's always a lot of it. It's spread out like crazy. But when it becomes, oh, it's good news, then nobody really talks about it. Or if it was wrong, you, you get a retraction way deep later on. So there you have it, good people. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I will see you soon. Peace.